so now let's say i'll take this circuit so now we have come up with some circuit with you know uh, some line of thought but let us also see if we can analyze it from scratch and then take and, and then get the same result right because we derived the circuit using some you know line of thought and then came up to the circuit but let us say you are given the circuit without someone telling you what it does we should also be able to analyze because that's how in it will work in practice you'll encounter something new you first have to analyze it and then see what's happening and then once you know what's happening in the circuit you can see how the circuit can be derived from scratch that's what you typically will do so let us say you are given this guy so how do you think you can solve this go about solving this or for that matter i give you any lump circuit i want you to find the node voltages and branch currents how will you solve for it use kcl so this also a lump circuit use kcl but difference is this operates in two clock phases so first let's draw the circuit in both clock phases right so we already know that so i'll quickly do this in the clock phase 51 capacitor c samples the input and the other capacitor is reset cf is reset <coughs> in clock phase 52 c tries to transfer its charge to cf now let us this guy uh, is not needed for me again this equivalent circuit is something we already knew i am drawing it again now i am interested to find the output in which clock phase 51 or 52 52 is when action is happening so i am interested in finding the output voltage v out at the end of the clock phase 52 so which means what circuit i should be trying to solve this one or this one okay. second one so again uh, you try to solve for this so you have to apply kcl so at which node i can apply kcl now virtual ground fine and by the way this is some common confusion can i apply kcl here at this node huh? i can apply it any node but uh, do you think will it give any information if i apply here why why not you don't know what is the current through the op amp okay so there is no point in trying to apply kcl there because this current is also unknown right so you only apply it at this node and let us say this is current i1 this is current i2 tell me what is i1 of p current flowing through the capacitor let us say the voltage across capacitor is vc c times fine you don't know right c dvc by dt okay yeah we don't i mean let's look at it this is the current flowing through the capacitor okay what is i2 of p similarly if i call this as dcf cf into So remember, what you are saying is the capacitor voltage is zero in this phase. At the end of this phase, it is zero. But we didn't know what happened in the previous clock phase. Okay, so we are writing everything as a function of time. Not this is the see this is the absolute truth. Okay, you put different time instants, you get different values for the capacitor voltage. That's all. So now let's try to see how uh, VC of T looks like. Okay, so this is the time axis. Let us say I demarcate the two clock faces, five one five two. So uh, tell me, in so, uh, so, uh, C off, uh, off capacitance, uh, off capacitance. Yeah, I mean you can do it, but we know that's not going to matter a lot, right? I mean, uh, off okay, capacitance. Uh, oh, okay. This is okay, right? Because Ideally, at the end of this, this will be zero. This will be zero. It's okay. 
I mean, in principle, yeah, you can take all parasitic capacitors and work it out. But it's fine. We already know that the top capacitance is not causing an issue when we derived it. So that's why we are, we are ignoring it. If you want, you can take and do. That's just going to add additional things. So tell me uh, the voltage across the capacitor I have marked in this polarity. In the clockwise pi 1, what is this voltage? Minus V in. So let us say it is some minus V in. In clockwise phi 2, what is this voltage? This is 0, this is 0, voltage is 0. So what will happen to this voltage now? Assume that we have ideal switches, ideal op amps. It will jump to 0. Okay. So this is the, uh, this is minus V in. This is Vc of t. Correct? Now if I try to plot the current, I will be taking the derivative of this. If I take the derivative of this, how will it look like? It is a step going from minus V into 0. I take derivative, what do you get? You get an impulse. What will be the height of the impulse or area of the impulse? And let's say I am plotting C dVc by dt. I get C times what? I mean, this is a negative jump or a positive jump? Impulse should be positive or negative? Positive. positive. So what is the height delta here? Okay. It's going from minus V in to 0. So 0 minus minus V in blah blah blah. So this is this guy. So now we know I1 of t. Similarly, let's do I, uh, I2 of t. For that, I need to find voltage across Cf. So I have taken this as the polarity. So here, what is the voltage across Cf in this polarity? 0. So let me mark it. And in this phase, what is the voltage across P of Huh? No, no, it, no, no, VCF is what you are trying to plot. In terms of the other voltages in the circuit, what is it? This is V out. Minus of V out. Okay. So this will be here and it's going to jump to. So again, you are trying to uh, take this guy. So if you do this, what you get now? This is a negative jump. We have a negative impulse. What is the area of the impulse? Cf into? Yeah, minus Cf into V. So now I know what is I, I1 of t. It is uh, Cv in times delta of t. This guy is? minus Cf V out delta of t. So now you, uh, I know I1 plus I2 is 0, so you take Cv in delta of t, or I will write it like this. Yeah, that is exactly it. So now I will write Cv in as like this, right? So we got this as 0 minus minus v. This is how we got that impulse, okay? Plus Cf into, I have minus v out okay. so now of course uh, if this is the equation these guys some of these two must be zero and then you compute you get v out is okay same thing i am taking some of these two equal to zero cv in must be equal to cf v out that gives V out as C by C of times V. I have just written this fellow intentionally like this because that is how we computed. Area of the impulse was basically the final voltage minus the initial voltage times the capacitance that is the area of the impulse. This is fine. I have just used normal case here. Huh. Yeah, it is okay. It is case here, however you know you can do it. So, okay. so here, uh, let me actually rewrite this in a slightly different way. So this is the main equation. Right? So I will take delta of t because that we are not doing anything. Okay. 
so here remember c times 0 was the initial charge in the capacitor c right and minus v in time c is the final charge the capacitor c has so this is basically delta q for the capacitor c fine similarly minus v out times cf is the final whatever charge in the capacitor this is the initial thing so this is again so this basically means that the final charge in the capacitor c minus the initial charge in the capacitor c plus final charge in the capacitor cf minus initial charge in the capacitor cf zero that basically says you know summation of initial charge is this is what you probably may have seen as charge conservation somewhere or the other right i directly didn't do this and did the kcl way because most of the time when i ask students how do you solve switch capacitor circuits the first answer is charge conservation if i ask why not use kcl the answer is well it's capacitor switch charge charge conservation okay but please remember that any lump circuit for that matter can be solved using kcl just that when your circuit contains ideal switches and capacitors kcl is summation of the current is zero if you have ideal switches and the capacitors the currents are looking like what impulses so in that case area of the impulse is basically the charge so that is why in this special case kcl boils down to charge conservation okay remember maxwell equation is the ultimate we are not dealing with maxwell we are dealing with lumped circuit so kcl is the mantra for us everything else is a subset okay. and in fact you can also solve it uh, the other way just a couple of minutes so here right uh, do this. the capacitor here i i mean i'm interested to solve this circuit that's clear now if my capacitor is having some initial voltage how can i model that initial voltage if i have capacitor with some initial voltage i can model it as a capacitor with zero initial voltage and a voltage source in series with it this is seen i mean have you seen this before so here you can do the same thing this is the circuit you are interested in you uh, among these two which capacitor has some initial voltage yeah no vcf or vc so you can model this initial voltage as a voltage source like this with the proper polarity say some in v initial times u of t or whatever and then solve for it right and this is also this you can solve it like this also and here if you solve for it using kcl you'll have summation ik of t equal to 0 and the capacitor current is ck dk by dt right this will give you differential equation so if you make your mind that i don't like differential equation i learnt in 11th standard i only like algebraic equations i learnt in 6th standard how do you convert this to algebraic you use laplace transform or instead of writing kcl in time domain you write kcl in laplace domain right so you just say summation ik of s equal to 0 and do it. and see when you write laplace transform i of s how do you find i of s from i of t integral what is the units of this fellow no no units that's okay this is ampere yeah ampere second right which other quantity has units of ampere second charge so when you are solving the circuit in laplace domain you are actually doing charge conservation just that you never realized it so far okay and not just that laplace is ultra powerful because here i have considered the switches are all ideal op amp is ideal so voltage is kind of you know let me copy paste it voltage is jump instantly so here we assume that the voltage kind of goes from this to this but let us say the switch has some on resistance then the voltage will do this now if you use charge conservation you can't find what this and all right to find this transient 
you have to resort to Laplace and then take inverse Laplace transform and do it. But the assumption is if you are dealing with switch cap circuits, we have designed good switches so things settle within time and we are not interested and let's say you are not interested in this transient, we are only interested in the settled value. Okay. So this is the Laplace transform, remember I of s is uh, integral I of t e power minus s t dt. If I am interested in the steady state value, so uh, steady state value is basically t tends to infinity. I mean here the assumption is my time constant is so small that my end of my clock phase T s by 2 looks like infinity, right. If I am looking at steady state value, what is the value for complex frequency s you will use? Steady state is t tends to infinity, so frequency should tend to 0. And if you put s equal to 0, what do you get here? Yeah, it is integral i of t dt, which is what? Charge. So, when you are solving for Laplace transform, I mean, if you are uh, doing KSL in Laplace domain, at s equal to 0, that is basically charge conservation. Okay. So, bottom line, if you have any switch cap circuit, and you are only interested in finding the steady state or settled value, you uh, directly can use charge conservation. Of course, you can also do KCL. KCL is charge conservation and the procedure is this. Let me just summarize and then we will continue with some problems. So you have let us say something like this. First step is like how you do in KCL. You apply KCL at some particular nodes. You choose which node you are applying KCL in. And in this case, this is the particular node you are interested. This does not give you anything. So you take this guy and then you say i1 plus i2 is 0. And for capacitor, i is basically dq by dt. So which means if it is all ideal, I have, I can say delta q by delta t. And delta t you make, I mean, no, that goes to 0. So summation ik of t. 0 that boils down to delta q by delta t 0 that basically says summation delta q 0. You look at a particular node, see what is the delta q flowing here, delta q flowing here, add them equated to 0. That is all you are supposed to do. Okay. So, we will continue from this. Slide. 